In this tutorial, we will be going through the basics of Sonic World's engine. This is often used to create Sonic games. Now, first to begin with, we will be going through the, the main values of the player, which can be found in Player Management and Control and Actions. Luckily, all of the actions are already commented down, so you know which action does what. This will be easier later when you want to create your own actions. Now, what we want to do first, we would like to change our sprite. Because we don't want to have the same looking game all the time. So I'll be using one of the sprites I created beforehand and used in this tutorial. To delete the background when you have something selected, press Ctrl N and then simply make the, the purple or whatever color you want transparent with this color. I'll go through all the that color. Now I'm going to delete the rest of the animations since I don't need those. And this is how it will look like. Looks good for now. And hotspot. This is important. This is basically the camera of where the sprite will be. It determines the rotation and the position of the sprite. I don't remember where it was, but I didn't like the position, so I'm going to move it up a bit. Hopefully it'll move my sprite down. And it did. Now it's perfect. Okay. Now, creating a new action. It's quite simple, actually. Let's create a new group here. Let's name it Sonic Base Engine Tutorial. Let's add a tool jump. It's, sim it's simple. Now we go to the alterable values of the M. The M has all the values of the player. Now, we want to check to see if the player is on ground. Zero meaning it's not on the ground, one meaning it is on the ground. We also want to check its action. Now, if you went back and checked the different actions on the list, you'd see that one is jumping. Okay. Now, we want to test to see if the player fires the button one. You could also replace this with if if user presses any key. But in this in this engine, it, it's better to use the press fire one because the controls can be modified in the properties. Now, after we have the actions done or the conditions, we're going to make an action. You go into alterable values set. We're going to want to change the Y speed here. Negative means the player will go up. Positive means the player will go down. To have a double jump, we're going to want him to go up, obviously. So we're going to make it minus 8. Now let's test it. It works pretty well. Something also you can do, you can make a simple boost. Now this we want to check to see if he's actually on the ground. Go to ground 1. Insert. We want to make sure the character isn't doing any action at all. Besides walking or running, which is in, in action. And we want to... Fire button 2. That's pretty much the secondary button. Oh, so you go in and modify the X speed. We're going to want to add the X speed to the character's already pre existing X speed. So we're going to go into values, change values, I mean, receive values, get the X speed. Then we're going to 
on a plus three or whatever value you want that can be changed times the direction I retrieve the value. The direction of the player moving values. What this does is makes the makes it negative or positive based on the direction. Direction right is positive and direction left is negative one. Now let's test this out. I forgot to do something. You want to repeat while joystick is pressed. Otherwise, it'll only do it once when this action occurs. Perfect. That'll be the end of today's tutorial.